Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 says this. Remember, what he told them to do was to be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, right? That's what he was told to do. But in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, uh, the writer writes, and he says, listen, see to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root, somebody say bitter root, bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. So instead of us being fruitful, we allow bitter roots to spring up. You know, the Bible tells us the fruit, singular, of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, temperance, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, faith. Against such there is no law. So we ought to be producing the fruit of the Spirit. But too often, we individually have bitter roots. So we can't produce no fruit. Not only are we not producing fruit, the bitter root that's in us is springing up and defiling other folk. You got an issue, so I want you to have my issue. So I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to tell you all about my issue. Because I'm going to create your map based off of my experience. This is how I see it, so this is how you should see it. Because this is the reality. No, that's your reality. Does this make sense? Bitter roots. Bitter roots. Y'all remember the old expression, misery loves company? It really does. It does. Bitter people want to be around other bitter people. Happy people want to be around other happy people. Joyful people want to be around joyful people. Now, let's take it economically. Wealthy people want to be around other wealthy people. Poor people want to be around wealthy people. I shouldn't have gave you that opportunity. Generally, that would be a good thing. Because they can get their map changed. See, if I'm experiencing poverty, I should want to be around some folk who understand how to accumulate wealth. Because obviously, there's something going, watch this, there's something going on on the inside of me that's keeping me impoverished. It's not the world, it's not society. Now watch, if it were the world and if it were society, everybody would be experiencing that condition. So it's obviously not the world and it's not society. It has to be something going on in the inside of me. I need to update my map. Now, in order to update my map, I need to have somebody who at least has a map close to where I want to (laughs) go. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Say, Lord, I done come to church and pastor talking about maps. I'm trying to show you how we, you can get where you're trying to go. So, 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 so I should have this fruitful thing going on in me. People should come around me and they're like, man, despite everything he's going through, he's still got joy. Despite everything he's going through. He still has faith, despite everything he's going through. I know what he's going through because I'm going through something similar, but how is he managing to go through it with joy? And I can tell you this, it wasn't because I went in the prayer line and got zapped. Do I believe in prayer lines? Yes. Do I believe folk get zapped? Yes. Do I believe that's the all in all of folks' transformation? No. There are no easy fixes in the kingdom. (laughs) I love it when I see people's eyes start going this way and that way. It lets me know they're searching for that connection. Bitter roots. I'm unhappy. I don't want you to be unhappy. I don't like them. I don't want you to like them. I don't agree. I don't want you to agree. I mean, all of this stuff going on because of a bitter root. 
It's a bitter root. And if you leave a root unchecked, it's going to choke the life out of everything you come in contact with. I learned that from watching Deb work on the garden. I said, what are you doing? You planting stuff? She said, no, I'm digging up these weeds first. She says, as a matter of fact, there's a shovel over there. Can you dig and see if you can find any? I forgot what they call them little onion-looking things that's way down in there. You, you, can, you don't even know they're down in there, but they're there. You just got to dig for them. And you dig, and all of this stuff start coming up. And I'm like, well, what is this? Oh, that, that's this kind of something. You don't want those in there because they will choke out. The, but, but they're under the ground. I couldn't even see them. How did you know that they're there? Because I'm used to doing this. See, when you get used to doing some stuff, you know what can be buried below the surface. Bitter roots. Now, here's three things that bitter roots do that can really mess us up. Bitter roots will block our ability to experience God's grace in our life. It will block the grace of God from operating in your life. A bitter root will block the operation of God's grace. You can't even respond to the grace of God when you're in bitterness because you, you can't believe God is that good. It doesn't fit your map. Number two, a bitter root will cause internal trouble in you, both physical and emotional. There are people who have physical problems where there's really nothing wrong with their body. They got a bitter root that's, that's impacting the, their physiology. Science will tell us, you know, a lot, a lot of people's problems is psychosomatic. It's all in their head. So if we can get, the, if we can get their head straightened out, we can take care of this physical problem. You ever notice what stress does to you physically? You get over in the stress, it'll kill you. I don't know why my leg's starting to hurt. It could be all that stress you're dealing with. How many times you've been to the doctor and you thought it was one thing and he asked you, one last time you took a vacation? I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Bit of root. Cause physical and emotional problems. So, how do we, what, so what do we do? You know, how do we do, how do we update this map? How do we, how do we go in and make sure that our map is being updated? How do we make sure that the way that we are representing the world or representing the world to ourselves is accurate? How do we know that we have a map that's really serving us well? How do we know we have a map that's empowering our lives and not disempowering our lives? Because no one can disempower you but you. You ever, had, you ever say this to yourself? None of y'all, but I have. They make me so sick. They get on my nerve. Well, if you move your nerves, they won't see how to get on it. <laughs> you made me so mad. You made me mad. Why would I give somebody that much power in my life that they can make me mad? Think about it. I'm giving away my personal power to people or to experiences. Things don't work out the way you wanted them to work out. Do you go into a depression? Or do you take a step back and say, hmm, let me see how I can adjust this thing to, to, to get the outcome. Because I know I can get the outcome because I'm full of potential. I can do this. Do you all see what I'm getting at? Yes, okay. Hallelujah. Destroy relationships. And as a result, it destroys homes. You let a bitter root settle into a marriage and watch what happens to the kids. 
I ain't never going to get married. Why? Girl, my mom and dad, they ain't never do nothing but fuss and fight. And I don't want to live like that. Now they have a map of marriage that's faulty. <laughs> but now they've taken that map onto themselves now. And now they're living their life off of a map they picked up from somebody else. Instead of saying, wow, they got some serious communication problems. You know what? When I get married, we ain't going through that. So I have learned looking at the way they're mapping their marriage to know that's not the one that I want. So I don't even want that map. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find me a healthy, functioning couple somewhere that can mentor me and my husband so we can have the kind of if your marriage is jacked up why you want to go talk to somebody else about how to fix theirs does this make sense you can't manage your money how are you going to tell somebody else how to manage theirs you can't keep your tongue from saying the wrong stuff. How are you going to teach somebody else how not to do it? How are you going to do it? You can't. Which might be one of the reasons the church has become so impotent. Because we don't know how to handle our own stuff. But we want to tell the world how good God is. And they see the church. Y'all is the most fussingest group of people I've ever seen in my life. And you say y'all serving the same God. And y'all say y'all got the spirit of God. Y'all got the Holy Ghost. Really? Bitter roots. The church has become infested with bitter roots. And it's defiling people. And the sad thing is, here's one of the sad things. I'm closing. Shortly. Here's, here's one of the sad things. A person can have a bitter root, infect somebody else. They can get over theirs. But the person that they infected, they still infected. That's why you have to be careful not to take on other folks' offenses. Because they might get over theirs. And you stuck with yours. So, again, the writer of Hebrews says, You have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him, and you were taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you ought to put off the old man. Okay. Who is supposed to put off the old man? He said, you ought to put off the old man, implying you have the power to put him off. So if you don't want to live that life that was in Adam, don't live the life that was in Adam. As the adage used to say, just say no. Just say no. I mean, it amazes me how little power we as believers actually believe that we have. We don't have to live governed and controlled by the world. Say, well, that happens to everybody. No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen to everybody. 